your students this time we are dealing with the gymnosperms first the general characters of gymnosperms gymnosperms are primitive seed bearing plants the word meaning of gymnosperms gymnos means naked and sperma seed that means naked seeded plants the seeds are not found inside a fruit so they are said to be naked majority of the members of gymnosperms they are evergreen trees or shrubs with xerophytic adaptations regarding the morphology of gymnosperms the plant body is a sporophyte and it is differentiated into root stem and leaves regarding the roots the root system it is tap root system roots of some plants have symbiotic relationship with algae or fungi for example coralloid roots of cycas having algal association and mycorrhizal roots of pinus stem it is erect branched and woody but in cycas the stem is unbranched in nature presence of permanent leaf scar on the stem is a characteristic feature of this gymnosperm group the leaves are usually dimorphic two types of leaves foliage leaves and scale leaves foliage leaves are green simple needle shaped or pinnately compound and scale leaves are minute and deciduous regarding the anatomy of pteridof gymnosperms they possess well developed vascular system and the vascular bundles are collateral and open xylem vessels are absent the major function of conduction it is performed by xylem tracheids in phloem companion cells are also absent stem shows secondary growth leaves they possess thick cuticle and sunken stomata and leaves have no lateral veins so lateral translocation of nutrients that is performed by transfusion tissue regarding the reproduction of gymnosperms gymnosperms are heterosporous in nature and the reproductive structures are cones or strobilus and they contain mega and microsporophylls cones are usually monosporangiate male and female cone they are separate ovules are naked structures seen on mega sporophylls male gametes they are non motile except the members gingo and cycas fertilization is siphonogamous that means it occurs with the help of a pollen tube the sperms are carried by pollen tube endosperm is haploid in nature that means they are formed before fertilization in angiosperms usually endosperm is triploid this formed after fertilization but here in gymnosperms endosperm is haploid distinct alternation between sporophytic and gametophytic generation is present the dominant phase it is diploid sporophytic phase and the haploid gametophytic phase is reduced and that is dependent on the sporophytes the type we have to study in gymnosperms it is the cycas cycas it is a widespread genus it is widely distributed genus found mostly in the eastern hemisphere there are about 25 species worldwide of these six species are common in india the common indian species they are cycas sicilianus and cycas raveluta 
This is the Cycus revoluta and this is the Cycus circinalis. The morphology of Cycus. Cycus it is an evergreen, slow growing, long living, palm like plant and the plant body it is differentiated into root, stem and leaf. Regarding the morphology of Cycus, it is an evergreen, slow growing, long living, palm like plant and the plant body it is differentiated into roots, stems and leaves. There are two types of roots, normal tap roots and coralloid roots. The tap root it is short living and it is replaced by adventitious roots. And these roots are positively geotropic and their main functions they are anchorage and absorption of water and mineral nutrients. Then coralloid roots. They are coral-like appearance. They are negatively geotropic roots, grow on the surface of the soil. They grow vertically upward and come out of the soil surface, branch dichotomously to form coral-like mass. In the cortical region, algal zone will be present. And the algae, the cortex of these roots, have algae anabina or other blue green algae and this region is known as algal zone. The function attributed to the coralloid roots they are said to be involved in nitrogen fixation. These are the coralloid roots, coral like masses. Stem. Young stem of cycus, it is tuberous and subterranean and the apical part, it is covered with brown scale leaves. And the oldest stem, it is thick, columnar and woody with a crown of pinnately compound leaves at its top. And the stem, it is covered with persistent and woody leaf bases. Usually the stem is unbranched. the leaves. Leaves are dimorphic, that means they include two types of leaves. They are foliage leaves and scale leaves. These foliage leaves, they are large, green, pinnately compound and spirally arranged. The pinnately compound leaves, the leaflets are arranged on either side of the branches. A single mid vein is present on the leaflet. The young leaves show circinate vernation. Then scale leaves. Scale leaves are small, dry, rough and triangular. They are non-photosynthetic leaves and they are covered with ramenta. They protect the apical meristem or other aerial parts of the seed. They also have persistent leaf bases and form that form a part of the armor of the old stem. And both foliage leaves and scale leaves, they are arranged in close alternate whorls at the apex of the stem. Usually a single crown of leaves, it is formed in a year. These are the leaves foliage leaves, green colored and the scale leaves and the circinate vernation of the young leaves can be seen in this picture. Next is the reproduction. Cycus reproduces vegetatively and sexually. Vegetative reproduction by means of adventitious buds or bulbings and this develops from the basal part of the stem after falling on the soil 
they will develop into new plants. The bulbils formed from male plants develop to male plants and the bulbils develop from female plants they will develop into female plants. In some species from the roots suckers may develop and they will grow for some distance and they develop into new plants. These are the bulbils. Then sexual reproduction. Cycus is dioecious. That means separate male and female plants are present. Male reproductive organs are cones or strobilus and the female structure it is mega sporophyll. Next is the male cone. This male cone they develop at the apex of the stem. They are short stalk, compact, oval or conical woody structure. Microsporophylls are arranged spirally around a cone axis in acropetal succession. The larger microsporophylls are seen in the middle part and smaller will be present in the base and the apex of the cone. When the male cone forms, the growth of the stem may be arrested for some time, but the growth will be resumed by the activity of a lateral bud arising from the base of the cone. So shortly afterwards, the cone gets pushed to one side. Then microsporophyll. The main cone consists of many microsporophylls and they are arranged spirally around a cone axis in acropetal succession. The microsporophyll, it is soft and fleshy in young. At maturity, it becomes hard, woody, flattened and triangular. There are two parts the microsporophyll, the proximal and distal part. The proximal part is fertile and wedge shaped and the distal part, it is sterile having an upward projection called apophysis. The upper part of the microsporophyll, it is sterile in nature and the lower surface, it bears microsporangia arranged in groups called sori. Each sorus consists of three to six microsporangia with delicate hairs in between. The wall of microsporangium, it is differentiated into three layers. They are outer exothesium, middle endothesium and inner tapetum. The exothesium, it is thick wall and cutinized. Middle endothesium, it is thin wall and inner tapetum it is involved in nutrition. Large number of microspores are formed in microsporangium and the microspores they are globular, uninucleate and haploid. They are formed from the sporogenous cells after meiosis so they are haploid in nature. Microscopes have thick wall. It is formed of outer exine and inner indine. This is the microsporangium containing numerous microspores. Megasporophylls. In cycles, the female plants do not produce female cones. Instead, the megasporophylls, they are arranged in close spirals around the stem apex in acropetal succession.
the mega sporophylls they are flat dorsi ventral about 15 to 30 cm long you will have a basal stalk and terminal pinnate lamina the ovules are arranged on the lateral sides of the stalk so the upper part is lamina upper lamina part it is sterile the basal stalk that bears ovules on lateral sides then structure of the ovule ovules are large sized they are sessile or short stalked oval or spherical and they may be perhaps this uh, thicus ovule it is the largest ovule in the plant kingdom the ovule consists of centrally placed new cells this parenchyma is in nature and discovered by a three layered integument outer and inner sarcotesta fleshy layers the middle sclerotesta and this integument encloses the parenchyma is new cells the new cells projects the new cell cells projects to the micropylar region of the ovule to form to form the new cell beak the opening of the ovule in the apical part it is known as micropyle in this opening region the integument will not be present the ovule consists of a large central mass of parenchyma cells it is known as new cells and this new cell it is covered by a three layered integument outer and inner fleshy layers known as sarcotesta outer sarcotesta and inner sarcotesta and the middle layer it is formed of sclerenchyma cells called sclerotesta some of the new cell cells they project into the micropylar opening of the ovule to form the new cell beak then the opening of the ovule it is the micropyle then the new cell are beak cells some of the new cell are beak cells they dissolve to form a chamber to collect the pollen it is known as pollen chamber and one of the deeply situated new cell are cell it differentiate into a megaspore mother cell and the uh, megaspore mother cell it undergoes meiosis and produces four haploid megaspores of this the lowermost becomes functional all others will degenerate then the steps involved in the reproduction sexual reproduction process process of cycus they are male gametophyte development before pollination then pollination male gametophyte development after pollination mature sperm female gametophyte development development of archegonium fertilization male gametophyte development before pollination the microspore it is the first cell of the male gametophyte the microspore germinates or develops into male gametophyte and the megaspore to female gametophyte here the microspore it is unicellular and uninucleate is covered by exine and indine indine exine is the outer thick wall and indine is the inner thin wall microspore is the first cell of the male gametophyte the microspore starts germination in situ that means while they are still inside the microsporangium the microspore divides into two they are prothallial cell and antheridial cell the smaller cell it is known as prothallial cell and the larger cell represents the antheridial cell In this prothallial cell it does not divide any further but the antheridial cell it divides to form a larger a larger tube cell and a smaller generative cell this is the microspore or pollen grain this one cell uninucleate 
it undergoes division to, forms a, to form a prothelial cell and an antheridial cell. This prothelial cell remains undivided, but the antheridial cell divides to form a generative cell and a tube cell. The shedding of the microspores takes place at this three cell stage consisting of prothelial cell, generative cell and tube cell. Further development takes place within the pollen chamber. Then the pollination. The pollination in cycles it is inophilus. Nature microsporangium dehyses liberating large numbers of three celled microspores and this microspores are entangled to get entangled in the adhesive fluid oozes out from the micropylar end of the body. The further development takes place inside the body. Male gametophyte development after pollination. Here the exine breaks and the indine comes out in the form of a pollen tube which penetrates the new cellular tissue. The generative cell divides soon and forms a stalk cell and a body cell. The stalk cell does not divide further but enlarges in size. The body cell also becomes large sized. During this period, the pollen tube penetrates the new cellus and hangs down in the archegonial chamber. This pollen tube acts as posteria as well as sperm carrier. The body cell divides into two sperm mother cells. Each sperm mother cell later on transforms into a sperm or androcytes. The sperms are liberated in the pollen tube by breaking of the sperm mother cells. The three cell states the pollen grain which is deposited in the pollen chamber of the ovule. The exine breaks and the intine comes out in the form of a pollen tube. Division takes place to form the body cell and the stalk cell. The body cell forms the sperm mother cells, divides to form sperm mother cells and the sperm mother cell forms the sperms, two sperms. The mature sperm, body cell divides to two sperm mother cells, each sperm mother cell later on develops into two sperm and the mature sperm, it is top shaped in nature and uninucleate. It contains five to six turns of spiral bands with thousands of cilia. It is considered as the largest in the plant kingdom, largest sperm in the plant kingdom. Then, development of female gametophyte. Megaspore, it is the first cell in the development of female gametophyte. It is haploid in nature and the development, it is in situ. That means Within the new cellus, the development of megaspore takes place. The functional megaspore it increases in size, and the nuclear nucleus divides mitotically to form several free nuclei. And this nuclei, they are pushed towards the periphery of the megaspore, and a central vacuole develops. Then wall formation starts from the periphery towards the center, and the entire gametophytic tissue becomes cellular and this mass, cellular mass, it represents the female gametophyte or endosperm. It develops without fertilization, so it is haploid in nature. Then, this is the functional megaspore undergoes free nuclear division, central large vacuole, then cell wall formation occurs and a cellular mass endosperm is formed inside the ovule. 
then development of archegonium. An archegonium develops from a single superficial initial near the micropylar end of the endosperm. Near the micropylar end of the endosperm, a archegonial initial develops. And this archegonial initial, it divides periclinally to form outer primary neck cell and an inner central cell. The primary neck cell divides anticlinally to form two neck cells which form the neck of the archegonium, the two-celled neck of the archegonium. The central cell enlarges in size and forms the venter and the nucleus, central cell nucleus, it divides into two nuclei, the ventral canal nucleus and egg nucleus. No neck canal cell is formed in cycles. So in mature archegonium, there will be a neck having two neck cells, then the venter consists of ventral canal nucleus and egg nucleus. And this archegonial neck that opens in an archegonial chamber formed by the dissolution of nucellar cells above the archegonial initials. divides into two primary neck cell and central cell. Neck cells divides into two neck cells. Then ventral cell divides to form ventral canal nucleus and egg nucleus. At maturity, two cell neck and a uh, cell having egg nucleus and ventral canal nucleus. And this archegonium opens into the archegonial chamber and it is formed by the dissolution uh, of new cellular cells seen just above the archegonial initials. chamber. This is the archegonial chamber. And fertilization. The pollen tubes containing the sperms and tube nucleus, they grow downward penetrating the tissue of the pollen chamber. The pollen tubes now hang between a cavity formed partly by pollen chamber and partly by archegonial chamber. In the end, the pollen tube bursts and discharges the sperms into the archegonial chamber. One of the sperms enter into the archegonium through its neck and reaches up to the egg. Fusion takes place between the egg nucleus and the male nucleus. The cilia and the cytoplasmic membrane of the sperm are stripped off and the only the male nucleus fuses with the egg nucleus to form the cycle. Here the pollen tube acts as postorium by absorbing food for the developing male gametophyte and the, as well as a sperm carrier. The fertilized this is the mature ovule, the pollen chamber, the deposited pollen grain grows down, uh, the pollen tube grows downward, reaches into the archegonial chamber. The sperms are liberated here through the archegonial neck, the sperm enter into the and fuses with the egg nucleus. And the fertilization in cycles. It is takes place with the help of a help of flagellated sperms. So the fertilization, the term used for fertilization, it is pseudiogamy. And it is also known as siphonogamy because this fertilization it is accompanied by the pollen tube formation. The pollen tube acts as the sperm carrier. So, pollen tube carries the sperms towards the egg, so siphonogamy, and the male gamete, it is having flagellated structures, this flagella, so the fertilization is at least through diogamy. The two sperms, they are flagellated structures, so through diogamy, then the fertilization takes place with the help of pollen tube. So, siphonogamy. 
and zygote is formed after fertilization. Male and female nucleus fused to form zygote. It is deployed in nature and the zygote enlarges in size. It undergoes numerous free nuclear divisions forming numerous nuclei. That means nuclear division it is not followed by wall formation. And this nuclear uh, they are pushed towards the periphery. After some time, wall formation starts. The wall formation starts from the periphery towards the center and a cellular pro-embryo is formed. And this embryo it has three parts, upper posterior region. It absorbs nutrients for the developing embryo. Then the middle suspensor zone that push the embryo deep into the female gametophyte or endosperm. Then the lower embryonal region that forms the main part of the embryo. This is the embryo, suspensor cell, embryonal cell, suspensor, and then the posteria. After fertilization, the ovule becomes C. It is not enclosed in ovary, so that uh, seeds are said to be naked in nature. Thereby the name gymnosperms. Embry uh, this uh, uh, seed encloses embryo with two cotyledons, a plenum and a radical. Under suitable conditions, seeds germinate and forms a sporophytic plant. This is the life cycle of gymnosperms. Separate male and female plants. Cycus male plant produces male corn. Male corn contains microsporophylls. Microsporophyll bear, microsporangium, microspore mother cell. It undergoes meiosis, forms the micro haploid microspores. And this microspores, they germinate. Or female, female gametophyte is produced to form anthrozoid mother cells. They will transform into anthrozoids. Then Female strobilus, they are megasporophyll, bears megasporangium, megaspor mother cell, undergoes meiosis, forms megaspores, megaspores germinate to form female gametophyte or embryo sac, bears the archegonium, archegonium contains egg. Then egg nucleus and the male nuclei, they together, they undergo fusion to form the zygote, zygote germinates to form the embryo, Embryos enclosed in seed, seed germinates and produces the cycus sporophytic plant. So, sporophytic generation and gametophytic generation. Alternation between sporophytic and gametophytic generation. This is the diagrammatic representation of the life cycle of cycus. Thank you.